Vex Practical Farm Research is here to help you turn your products and practices into profit. You've got questions, we've got answers. This is Ask PFR. We've got a lot of questions here over the last month regarding cover crops. Specifically, you know, when should I apply my cover crops and how? And so, uh, Ryan, why don't you give us a little bit of your feedback, uh, especially, it's not, it's not just a simple answer. Um, you know, we, we've covered it quite a bit in terms of from, from our southern market area to our northern market area. What, what do you recommend to guys on timing? Well, when it comes to timing, I really don't look at it as, you know, well, today's, you know, September 8th or whatever. This is, it's time for me to put my cover crops on. It's really, you know, what your, to me, your application method is driven by your, your product. So, you know, when you think about like an oat radish mix, you know, that's something I want to get out early, try to maximize as much growth as I can get out of that. Uh, when you get into cereal rye and annual ryegrass, that kind of stretches the season out. You got a little bit more time to, uh, to get those uh, mixes put on. Yep. So we've actually in here in 2017 done, done a lot of work around um, applications, the different application methods. So Alexander, you know, what, what have we looked at here in 2017 in terms of how to get those cover crops established? Yeah, so we've got some different application methods, basically. Um, we've trying exclusively at this site, trying what's called the robot. So it's just um, um, an instrument that it's gonna go in the field on its own and basically a robot that's gonna do it itself. We've also done some interseeding just over the top with the Heggy, um, looking at a corn head and it seeding cover crops. Then we've done one with the vertical till where it's got a gandy box on there seeding in between kind of those tillage events and then drilling and seeing what those different types of application do. So along the lines of, of you know studies for 2018 and cover crop we're, we're interseeding these cover crops into our tillage study now so Brady why don't you tell us a little bit about how you guys did that a few days ago. So a few days ago we went into our no-till from our previous tillage study and we use we're trying to simulate the aerial um, application. So what we did, we put a box on top of a Hagee or high clearance spray rig and actually ran through this with two different cover crops in the corn and then two different in the soybeans as well. I think one thing on, on the inner seeding we were talking about taking the sprayer through there or even an aero application, you know, it's really, you know, looking at, you know, looking like we can look down this row of corn here and we can see, you know, 20 to 30 percent of daylight going down the center of that row. When we start to see, you know, that kind of daylight getting down to the row, we can see the weather forecast is, you know, if they're calling for, you know, six, seven tenths of an inch of rain, that's where we can typically make a make an application. Uh, on our soybeans, when we're getting into, you know, application and timing on soybeans, you know, right, right when, you know, 50 to 60 percent of that field is just starting to turn yellow across the field, that's when we can, you know, get in there and do an aerial application. Uh, those leaves will fall off, create a little bit of mulch and help get that seed to grow a little quicker. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about some of the challenges that come along with it, because that's where that's where we come into play in practical farm research as well. Is how am I going to terminate them? When do I terminate them? Um, you know, there's there's been quite a few challenges. We had some challenges with slugs this year. What right. what are you what are you seeing, and how are you guys, how are you having your grow some of these growers overcome those challenges? You know, it's really just about knowing what the products are going to look like in the spring. You know, whether you're planting annual ryegrass, cereal rye, you know, those are the two that are most confused of uh, of all the guys that I go out and talk to. So. You know, really just understanding that, that annual ryegrass can be that one that's a little bit more difficult to burn down. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got to break dormancy, be actively growing. Uh, winter rye, you know, can get four or five feet tall on you, just being able to be prepared to be able to get to plant through that product. Because that can be that can be a little bit daunting going through a, a five foot stand of sewer rye <laughs> if you've never done it before. But I've had I've had guys do it and I've had guys do it with success. So uh, we did the, the termination study this spring on 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 and won't you tell us a little bit about what what the guys over there did and, and how that went. So one of the treatments was to terminate two weeks before planting the crop and then terminate it as soon as you can after planting the crop. Um, they got it terminated pretty well, but a little bit of it wanted to bounce back um, with some of the rain we had early season, which I'm sure plenty of growers saw that too. Um, and we saw some differences with our application study too. We saw differences in biomass, and it goes back to that rainfall Ryan was talking about. Um, the applications that were made, and then we got a timely rain event. Those cover crops look beautiful, but those application methods where we didn't get a timely rain event, mm -hmm. not as great as Dan. 
Sure. One, one thing we haven't hit on too is residual chemistry, so herbicide, mm -hmm. yep. herbicide carryover. I mean, that's something that we always, you know, we always talk about, but you know, it's just something to kind of keep in the back of your head. Um, I think this year, it's pr with the amount of rain we've had in most of the geography in our marketing mm -hmm. area, I don't think it's going to be as much of an issue. But you yeah. know, just to you know, there's there's a lot of information out there on the different chemistries and the effects they can have on a cover crop stand, whether it's germination, poor germination, or just you know, stunning the growth of the stand. Yep. Yep. So being able to manage that system is key. Having a plan going into it. If you're gonna, if you've a guy that's never worked with cover crops before, there's a little bit of extra management that comes to working with cover crops, but um, uh, you can easily do it. And there's there's a lot of good benefits. We we have quite a few growers doing it yes. each and every year, and yep. and we hear a lot of good things. And um, and it's a lot of it's about how you manage it. So thanks, Alexander Knight, Brady Rogers, Ryan Moore. I'm Jason Gayheimer. Be sure to like and subscribe, or if you have questions, be sure to use the hashtag AskPFR. Thanks and have a great day.